A trip to woodland, retold by Jane and Sarah Brearley. Illustrations by Tony Wolf. Franz the Black Gnome. <coughs> Every sorrow day, that Saturday in Dragonland, Dragodad, the father of dragon eggs and dragon ups, went to pick fruit from the cocoyam tree. Cocoyams grow and ripen in just a week, as everyone knows. One sorrow day, Dragodad picked his cocoyams as usual and strolled home, whistling merrily and never noticing the small figure hiding behind a rock. It was Franz the Black Gnome! Franz had been kicked out of Gnome Village for his wicked deeds a hundred and fifty years ago. As far as the Gnomes knew, he disappeared forever. But Franz lurked in the neighborhood waiting to get his revenge. Aha! He said to himself when he saw Dragodad. Just wait till next sorrow day. Little did a kindly but dim-witted Dragodad suspect what fate had in store. At noon the next sorrow day, he set off to fetch cocoyams. The sly Franz had picked seven cocoyams and piled them temptingly in a rock cliff behind a tree. Then he'd made a hole in the tree trunk just big enough for a dragon's paw. Now, Dragodad had one failing. He was greedy. Seven cocoyams! he exclaimed when he spied the pile behind the tree. Without a second thought, he jumped his paw through the hole and grabbed one. But he couldn't get his paw back through the hole while holding the cocoyam, and he was too greedy to drop it. Meanwhile, Franz was sneaking closer and closer. Suddenly, Dragodad caught sight of him. The black gnome! He knew he was in trouble. Help! croaked Dragodad as his claws sank deeper into the cocoyam. What a dilemma! Drop that cocoyam, Dragodad, and run for your life! But Dragodad couldn't bear to let the cocoyam go, and while the silly nitwit was hesitating, Franz pounced, clubbing a saddle on the dragon's back. Dragodad was terrified. Please, Mr. Franz, don't make me late! My wife will be furious! But Franz took no pity on the dragon. He roped him to a post and made him trot round and round it, giving him a sharp slap on the ear now and then, just to show who was boss. Who is your master? demanded Franz at last. Franz is my master, the dragon replied meekly. The black gnome knew he'd tamed the dragon now, so he climbed on Dragodad's back and rode off toward the great volcano. Oh dear, oh dear, groaned Dragodad. Dragobel is going to be really mad. For centuries, Dragonland folk had been forbidden to go near the great volcano, for at the foot of this mountain grew the magic moss that could make dragons breathe fire. I'll teach those gnomes a lesson, growled Franz. We'll see who's boss when I turn up on a flame-throwing dragon. Attack! Poor Dragodad. The black gnome headed for the great volcano, digging his heels into Dragodad's flanks. Get a move on, dragon! The great volcano belts fire and rivers of burning lava ran down its sides. When they had reached a small plateau, Franz halted. Eat! he commanded. Dragodad, feeling hot and miserable, munched the magic moss. Clouds of smoke rose from the base of the volcano. Oh! yelped Dragodad. My back hurts! He craned around to see if a spark from the volcano had fallen on his back. What he saw made his eyes pop. Wings! Oh dear, oh dear! 
Dragobone is not going to like this. He moaned and started to sob. But the sob turned into a hiccup. And when Dragodad opened his mouth to let the hiccup out, a jet of flame burst through instead. I'm spitting fire, wailed Dragodad. Of course you are, you silly dragon, and you'd better learn to aim properly while you're at it. Not that way. Try again. The black gnome, eager for revenge, forced Dragodad to spit fire over and over again until the poor dragon learned to hit a target. A little later, as Franz flew the dragon over Gnome Village, he set fire to everything in sight, including Redbeard's pants. The gnomes were thunderstruck. After the terrible forest fire, they had been very, very careful. But why was fire falling out of the sky? Redbeard, however, had caught sight of Franz on his dragon. If I catch that little gnome monster, I'll wring his neck, growled the giant. You saw a gnome? asked Crocus. Yes, all dressed in black and riding a dragon. That must be Franz. We kicked him out of the village years and years ago. We'd forgotten about him completely. I wonder what he's up to. Meanwhile, Redbeard was feeling his burn behind. There's something sticking into me. An arrow! He pulled it out. There was a message attached. He read it aloud. All the gnomes must appear barefoot and hatless in the village square to hear my wishes and pay me homage. Crocus must come in his nightshirt to hear my decree, signed Franz the Black Gnome. How humiliating, cried Crocus. That gnome needs to be taught a good lesson. The other gnomes looked gloomily at Crocus. It was all very well to talk, but what could they do against a gnome with a flame-throwing dragon? That night, a very worried Crocus tossed and turned. I hope my plan works, he muttered.